It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that this week has truly seen a bit of magic with really beautiful videos of the total solar eclipse coming out online from the US. As we know, a total solar eclipse occurs when the moon comes in between the earth and the sun and it casts a shadow big enough to block up the sun completely over the region of the earth that experiences the eclipse. Now, eclipses themselves as a phenomenon are not uncommon. It's a simple three-body problem and the moon comes between the earth and sun often while the earth comes between the sun and moon too quite frequently in their respective orbits. But total solar eclipses in general, statistically speaking, are rare. Just looking at the time period from the inception, the birth of these three astronomical bodies, 3.8 billion years ago and their entire lifespans into billions of years into the future makes us understand just how rare a phenomenon a total solar eclipse is. We as humans are probably among the few generations through history, past, present or future to be able to witness and experience an actual total solar eclipse. And we'll come to that later. But beyond just seeing total solar eclipse, what we don't really see on live streams and hear about is the entire experience of it. A total solar eclipse is a great time to show just how much energy the Earth needs from the Sun every day. We can see in videos that as soon as the disk of the sun is covered by the moon, there is sudden darkness that falls. This darkness is just like nighttime, so it also causes a drop in temperature. This immediately simulates nighttime conditions, the loudest and easiest evidence of which is how crickets start immediately chirping as they do in the evenings after sunset. This is a fun phenomenon to observe for us lay people, but for professionals, a total solar eclipse is a crazy opportunity to study things that they can't otherwise. For example, studying the sun's corona. The corona is the outer atmosphere of the sun and when the moon blocks out the sun's complete disk, the corona becomes blazingly bright and parts of its structure can be seen. So, solar missions today, such as ISRO's Aditya mission, which orbits between the Sun and Earth, closer to Earth, are able to observe the solar eclipse and study the Sun's corona. There have been other similar scientific observations as well. A total solar eclipse in August of 1868 played the biggest role in the discovery of the element helium by the French scientist Pierre Janssen. In 1968, the total solar eclipse was visible not in Europe, but in India. So Janssen traveled to Guntur in the southern part of India to observe the eclipse and understand what elements make up the solar prominences or bits of energy and material that protrude out from the sun. Spectrometers and spectroscopes were already in use at this time by the scientific community and Janssen noticed the elements that he observed didn't match with anything that was known to date. Remember, helium is very light. So even though it's found abundantly in the universe in the form of stars and just dust, it is rare on Earth. So after explaining helium, discovering it and being given credit for it, he built the spectroheliscope to study the sun better. Later, after Einstein released his theory of general relativity, the total solar eclipse of 1919 was used to test out a basic premise. British astronomer Arthur Eddington took pictures of stars near the sun during the day, during totality. And with these pictures, he was able to show that gravity does indeed bend light. Now, these are all scientific observations and studies of total solar eclipses, which is quite recent. Through ancient history and religion, there have been myths associated with eclipses and major historic events have also transpired because of them. In many ancient cultures, especially in Asian ones and South American ones, eclipses were mostly interpreted as a monster or an animal or a demon chomping at the sun, such as Rahu and Ketu in Hindu mythology. In ancient Europe and in North America, 
Eclipses were often interpreted as an angry sun god or the sun and moon gods battling it out over something. Darkness has always been associated with negativity and fear and something causing the sun itself to darken in the middle of the day on the rare occasion was extremely scary to people and therefore eclipses were extremely powerful events in human societies. In a famous episode of Greek history, a solar eclipse in 585 BCE stopped a major war between the Lydians and the Medes because they thought that the falling darkness was a message from the gods asking them to stop fighting. Eclipses have been interpreted as messages from gods throughout history. But it's not like our ancestors did not try and figure out an explanation for them. Babylonian and Chinese astronomers were able to predict solar eclipses all the way back in 2500 BCE, over 4000 years ago. Nonetheless, eclipses were still feared and misunderstood and therefore exploited. Chinese astrologers in royal courts would often predict eclipses to signify successes and victories for their emperors. And it worked the other way also. In 1133, King Henry I in England died immediately after a solar eclipse and therefore in Europe, eclipses became associated with the ill health of monarchs. Eclipses have led to a lot of superstitions throughout history and many persist even today. We are very familiar with this in Indian society where many of our family members still believe such superstitions and publications continue to publish them. People think that we shouldn't eat or cook or travel during an eclipse, that a shower is needed immediately afterward to cleanse oneself, that people who are pregnant cannot touch metal or interact with sharp objects and other random restrictions like that. Literally not one thing is based on science. The only thing that is to be avoided during eclipses, during solar eclipses, is to not look at the sun directly because even if the disk of the sun is covered entirely, radiation from the sun will directly burn through our eyes and our retina. And that is scary. A solar eclipse is a phenomenon that can cause blindness by just looking up at it. But every time a solar eclipse occurs, especially a total solar eclipse, Thousands and millions of people come out to watch it and safely. A total solar eclipse with the change it causes to a majority of our biological senses is a phenomenon that has the intense power to unify people and make us marvel at the sheer scale and power of nature and the universe. Now, many might know this already, but one of my favorite facts ever is that the reason we can see the total solar eclipse is because we are living at the exact moment in time at the right point in the history and evolution of the human species where the moon and the sun have similar apparent sizes. Therefore, the moon can actually completely obscure the disk of the sun when we see this from Earth. This is because the moon is in fact moving further and further away from Earth at a rate of 1.5 inches per year. When the moon formed, it used to be nearly 20 times closer to Earth. This was like 3.8 billion years ago. And the moon covered a large portion of the night sky, obscuring most of the stars and even planets that we see today. Someday, millions of years into the future, which is still a small time interval in geological time scales. There will be a major, major event where the entire world comes together and people from other space settlements would come back to Earth to witness what will be the absolute last ever total solar eclipse visible to humans from Earth. <laughs>